Hello and welcome to The Art of Thinking Smart. This is a program that was originally developed by David Chang at Wealthbridge, and I've been hosting it for some time. I'm Michael North. And in this program, we try to interview some of the leaders of Honolulu's business and social and cultural and political communities to discover what are their secrets of success? What makes it possible for them to do the work that they do both from a personal and a professional standpoint. So we're interested in their story and what they're doing, but we're actually trying to get behind the scenes to understand who they are and why they're doing it. And that's the art of thinking smart. So today our guest is Antonio Trincao, who is originally from Portugal, but he's living now in Honolulu and running an exciting young company called You Can Event. Now, I want you to think about You Can Event for a moment and think, what could that possibly be? And now we're going to ask Antonio, what is that You Can Event? Hello, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here on your show. So basically, You Can Event is an online community where brands can easily identify vendors when organizing an event. So for example, if you want to do an event for uh, Think Tech Hawaii, you can find entertainers, catering venues, and easily you can do your event. So why wouldn't I go to an event organizer, an event management company that bundles all of that together? Yeah, because basically uh, most of the times those event agencies are just working with a few number of vendors. And with us, you can find all the vendors available in Honolulu. Mm. Okay, and you put together your own virtual team. Exactly. Based so on the recommendations that come from your system. Exactly. So our customer, uh, in a comfortable way, he just type, uh, I want to do an event in Honolulu for 200 people, and I might need catering, venue, and entertainer. Mm -hmm. uh, and our wide network of vendors, they get back with a lot of proposals, and we have a local event planner to help you in operations, management, and advertising for your event. So do you have a kind of an eBay auction kind of thing where you hear from several different vendors? Yeah, I, I like to say like we are kind of like Uber, so the, the customer just sends the request and then the vendors get back with proposals, with, with bids. Okay, so Uber for parties, Uber for conventions, Uber for business meetings, exactly. Uber for weddings. Um, yeah, right now we are not focused on that market, but soon we will be. Uh, right. I think that will be called like you can marry. <laughs> oh, okay. So you can all of that. You can, business. exactly. Okay, that's your brand. Exactly. So uh, how did you get into this? You just like to party and you want to help your friends to party better? So uh, as you said, I'm originally from Portugal and uh, on the Latin European culture, we have a lot of, uh, uh, we, we are like we have a lot of pleasure on the art of restoration and tourism and events. And since I was a young boy, around my 15 years old, um, I, I work on the, on the bartending industry, night li nightlife industry, and then I, I belong to a nonprofit organization called Azituna, and I did a lot of say that word again. Yeah, okay, Azituna. Azituna. Yeah, it's similar okay. than tuna, the right. fish, but it's called Azituna, and uh, basically. I, we did a lot of international tours. We played uh, all over the theaters in Europe. And, um, and so every time that we was playing on those theaters or organizing international tours or doing events on the nightlife industry, we had this question. Mm. How should we do an event? Mm. Where should we find the vendors? Mm. How can we mm. negotiate with vendors easily to do an event? So. Mm. That's how it came. Already. Yeah, especially in a big city like Lisbon, for example, exactly. there's so many options. And unless you produced an event successfully before, you really don't know where to start. Exactly. exactly. And you could end up spending a lot of money for somebody else to advise you on how to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is outsourcing and pushing the expertise out to the edges so that people can access the knowledge and contacts that they want, as opposed to getting it from single sources. 
Uh, so you said you were a bartender. You were like a Tom Cruise in cocktail. Let's yeah, see. yeah. Yeah. So I. Let's I, see. A, I want to see a trick or two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if I have a shaker here, I would like to do it. Could. But I could do it with a piece of paper. Like if we do this again. Yeah. We have to bring some shakers. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, I I love the cocktail culture. I have like. Uh, a friend that we work together called Antonio as well mm. uh, and uh, we worked together for a lot of years and we we, 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 we had a great pleasure on the art of, of the cocktail production mm. so so what what was it that turned the crank in you to oh, about okay. being a bartender yeah, exactly there was some some must have been something per yeah. does it help you to get girls uh, so yeah I'm sure that didn't hurt yeah yeah it's perfect <laughs> <laughs> we can like uh, give a lot of uh, different pleasures to and women there must be something deeper to sustain the interest y yeah so the thing is that I uh, I always had like a real a real passion about the 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 entertainment industry you know so i since i was a young boy i was like uh, the guy that uh, was like the actor on the school uh, was singing a lot of songs uh, with with my with my colleagues so uh, i always had a passion for entertainment industry so uh, when i got into the the nightlife industry i saw that i have a a good way to to build relationships with people mm -hmm. because when you are serving on a bar uh, you you tie strong relationships with, with with your customers with the people that surround you mm -hmm. and at the same point creating a personal experience for the people that you are talking to mm -hmm. the way that you talk the way that you do your cocktail the way that you create your own show is perfect to 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 bring you soft skills in terms of entertainment and and selling as well mm. so would it be safe to say that you have the soul and the heart of a networker of a relationship builder and exactly really turns you on to see people come together yeah, and it's, form. it's like my my real pleasure it's it's i i, I love to gather people that's mm. why we are doing you can event okay i love I, I i worry a lot about people i'm the guy that if i'm going to a restaurant the person that i really care about is the guy that is serving the food Mm. A, a lot of times, uh, and uh, like a lot of people that know me, uh, knows that that I'm going to the restaurant and I steal the the, the, the bartender or or the the employees and I uh, bring them to our party, uh -huh. saying, "Oh no, now you have to join <laughs> our, the party with us. Now you have to, to so drink with us." So you must be a good tipper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm always so uh, somewhere in there. There's a feeling like people are not connected enough. People are missing opportunities. There's energy that is left unmatched. And you feel like you're, you can be the spark plug that brings people together, is that? Yeah, I, I have a, 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 a nice vision about that. Mm. I, I always say to my team members and co-founder that I came from the future. And in the future, I I am known as the god of celebration. So uh -huh. I, I gathered a what lot of people. In the future. Uh, so a person that that gathers the entire world with celebration and events. So I always use this metaphor uh, about about what we want to achieve, and so we want to really connect people. And we believe that uh, in a world full of technology, uh, having like personal relationships and connections with real people mm. uh, physically on site it's it's the future you know to ensure the humankind so we're not going to go completely virtual and no. just live as a simulation mm. in a no I, I don't believe because we human beings we have like we have two sides on our brain like the side that is dis disruptive and wants to create massive evolution but on the same point we we, we care about keeping the, the nature as we know right mm -hmm. for example you can see that we now we are caring a lot about the, the environment and the foods and the organic foods you go to a supermarket and you see a lot of those things and I believe that the the people that are doing that is because we know that we have to stop in some way the massive growth that the earth is facing. So in a sense you're using the tools of cyberspace to bring people together better in human space. Exactly. So the easiness of technology 
can can empower mm -hmm. the real connection, the physical connection. Okay, so there's this young bartender who's just mixing drinks and smiling and having a good time with people and introducing and it's somewhere there must have been a seed like when were you 18 when you were doing that 20 years old exactly somewhere the seed got planted in young antonio trincao maybe from your father your mother a mentor a teacher what's what's your earliest recollection of the energy that became you can event yeah so uh i have like one important moment of, on my life that was uh created by my father um that basically uh he offered me like a trip when i on my 18 years old birthday and i traveled to new york city with him you know and uh when i arrived on, in the united states i i i the feeling that i had was okay Everything that I see in the movies, it's real, hmm. you know, and so I can. That whole Tom Cruise thing was yeah, actually real. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> and when I felt that that the movie thing, the, what happened on the movies, is real in the United States, hmm. I thought that I can be the actor of hmm. the movie, hmm. you know. So when I thought that, I decided that I, I will have to do something really hmm. big to the world. So you followed a very interesting path from your beginnings in Lisbon. I think a few years ago you started working with um, an incubator type company that made some investments. You went to one of these um, entrepreneurial kind of um, gatherings where you get to pitch and you were you won that or you got some recognition from that and then you bounced through to an event in New York and you got more visibility from that and can, can you describe the progression that you made exactly so um, before answer that question uh, our objective since the beginning uh, is to be at quarter in the United States because we have the biggest event cities in the world. Mm -hmm. Honolulu, Los Angeles, New York City are the main hubs of events and entertainment in the world. And so, uh, on the beginning of our journey in Lisbon, uh, we, we, our startup was incubated on Startup Lisboa, that is a really famous incubator in Europe, uh, one of the best. And um, we had a lot of events on the week and I had to do a lot of networking a lot of pitch sessions and that allowed me uh, to to connect with companies with customers like Microsoft Primark Mary Kay and many more mm. interesting so what was your experience with Microsoft for example yeah so Microsoft we we just partnered with them to do um, a big event on on their headquarters and um, we, we have done like, a, it's called a tech meetup, mm. where we gather a lot of companies from Portugal to meet the dis dis disruptive ideas uh, that are being done by, by the startups in Portugal. Okay. okay, so Microsoft headquarters, they have everything for us. Microsoft has a headquarters in Lisbon? In Lisbon, yeah. For just Iberia or for no, all of it's Europe? For it's, uh, uh, it's for the Iberia, yeah. Okay. I so bear. Portugal and Spain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, that must have been fantastic. Exactly, perfect. Wow. Um, so then you got spotted by Blue Startups, which is one of the elite incubators, I think, in America, if not in Top the world. Top 20. Yeah, yeah, really. It's amazing that for such a small city and out in the middle of the Pacific where nobody notices us on a global picture, it's amazing that there's such talent and they spotted you and we're going to go into a little bit of the details of that on the other side of this break with Antonio Trincao. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Raya Salter and I'm the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate and community outreach specialist and on Power Up Hawaii we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable and just energy future. To do that we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum from clean energy technology folks to community groups to to politicians, to regulators, to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at one o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. A veteran, 
My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. And we're back with Antonio Trincao. And we're talking a little bit more about Blue Startups and Honolulu. Yeah, Antonio, you're a long way from Lisbon. Uh, I'm sure you heard about Hawaii and Honolulu and you thought about Mai Tais and grass skirts and sand and sun and so on. Did you ever think that you were going to come here and organize a company? Uh, that is a, a curious question. Mm -hmm. So first, uh, Hawaii was a dream for me. Uh, since I was a young boy, being here, it's a dream. And second, I believe that uh, um, Hawaii tech scene and the ha Hawaii as a hub for entrepreneurs um, is perfect to build your culture. So the first reason that we decided to come to Honolulu was because I wanted to build a culture on our team, the values, the mission, the higher purpose. Mm. And Hawaii, it's the best place for that because of the Aloha spirit, you know? Mm. So I believe that in the future, a lot of good companies uh, will come to Hawaii to build the culture, to, to define the values, because mm. this is really important on your team. Mm. And uh, after that, of course, that they will move to San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York mm. City, because of the market mm. uh, industry. Uh, but on the first stage, building the culture, developing your product, build an MVP, Honolulu is one of the best places. And it's a gateway to Asia, too. Exactly the biggest markets. Exactly. So I want to break from this subject completely and look at a piece of video that came from about five years ago in an earlier stage of the company. Can we bring up that video? It's an event video from, from Lisbon. So talk us through, what are we looking at here? So uh, that's our nonprofit organization uh, where I met my co-founder. As a tuna. I as a tuna. Yeah. And we, we organize a lot of events. This, is, this, this event is called CELTA. Mm. Uh, it's one of the biggest events uh, in, in Europe. Mm. Uh, it brings more than 10,000 people on, 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 on the weekend uh, and involves all the, 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 the Portuguese scene and mm. student uh, uh, community. So it's really big. We bring a lot of famous artists, you will see further on the video. Uh, the theater, the music, the lighting, the audiovisuals, it's mm. really, really, really engaging. So did you organize all aspects of this, the talent yeah, and the tickets precisely, and the Precisely, and this, this, this festival uh, I organized with my co-founder, João. Mm. Uh, you can, here you can see the, the theater. Uh, I organized with my co-founder João and uh, like I said, it's a huge event, like mm. it costs like hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's, it's oh. a big event. You will see the theater further, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm familiar with event yeah, right management now. and I know what it takes to make something like this happen. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, you see the theater? Ah, oh, what theater is this? It's called Teatro Circo. It's, it's oh. in Braga, yeah. It's it's really really big. Uh, it's one of uh, I think that one 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 a reward, like for being one of the best theaters in the world. It's 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 similar to to one theater in Paris. Oh. really really. So that kind of represents the apex of what you guys want to help people to coordinate. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty much everything that people do is going to be smaller than that. Yeah. Exactly. And it could be really small. Um, event, but even a small one needs a bunch of different aspects all coordinated. Of course, of course. So uh, let's go back a little bit further. You know, we were talking about what it takes for Antonio to be Antonio, and I expected that somebody who started out as a bartender and has kind of freelanced his way through um, incubators and so on would be kind of a nonlinear thinker, but you're not. Right. 
Can you tell us about your day and how it begins and how it ends and how you manage it? So, um, my daily basis is, is built on this sentence. I want to be the best. So, I have uh, strong methods during my day to, to keep my fresh mind and my body healthy. So, every day in the morning, I wake up at 6.30. I drink a glass of water with apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. <laughs> and a little bit of pink Himalayan salt to keep the, the, the body detoxified. And then I go further and I drink, right now here in Honolulu, a cup of Hawaiian spirulina. Mm. Uh, it's algae, it's really, really cool. And then I have my breakfast. Usually I, I eat things without gluten because gluten hurts a lot. I eat things like coconut and a lot of healthy things. And then I move forward with, with my daily meeting with my team. I speak with my team, I share like the, the objectives for the team. And then on my lunch, I try always to heal, uh, eat healthy as much as I can. Mm. And then on the end of the day, I do sports. So mm. between 6 to 8 p.m., I try to do my daily sports. Activity. You have lots of options here because yeah. it's always summertime here. So It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's perfect. So do you keep track of things on a piece of paper or yeah. on an app? Or? So I'm developing like uh, a method uh, that basically I do these three things. So every every Sunday I grab a piece of paper, white paper, and I, I, I write down a cross, okay? And I write like three themes of my life. Mm. UK event, my professional area. Mm. Yeah, so exactly. So you can event. Mm -hmm. Then my personal life, mm -hmm. personal, and then sports, mm -hmm. okay? And then I do the weekly preparation of everything. So I just define like, okay, for you can event, I will do this, 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 the follow up for this customer, mm -hmm. the meeting with that customer, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then for personal, I have to talk with my father, to my, with my mother, with my friends. Mm -hmm. I have to... With your six girlfriends. Yeah. <laughs> Try to keep track of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, from Portugal, United States. <laughs> yeah. So, and then the sports. So yeah. I want to practice everyday sports and I want to do that. Oh. After doing that preparation, I put everything on my calendar to, because we, don't, we are not productive with to-do lists. Mm. We are productive with everything scheduled. Mm. And the final, the final piece of, of, of this puzzle is that every day I have like on my laptop sticky notes, okay? Mm. And every day I do the history of my day. So. I talk with that customer and he said that he's not uh, able right now to meet with me or I, I, I close the deal or I will have an interview and, and all of those uh, records I type on the sticky notes okay. and when I'm closing the meeting I can compare my brainstorming, yeah. my scheduled tasks and then the follow up of those tasks. So that leads into the next day. I don't miss anything. Yeah. It's perfect. So this is, I don't know if we can catch this on the monitor here. This is Antonio's technique. You see, there's you can event, there's the personal, there's the sports, and there's a calendar that ties them all together. Exactly. And at the end, you do the wrap up of how it all worked out exactly. relative to how you planned. Exactly. This yeah. technique I learned, I learned from, from Darren Hardy. He's a big international mentor. And uh, I just learned from him, he, he thought to us, and uh, it's perfect. Okay, that's very useful. I'm sure everybody will have their own variation on that. And I'm able to, to speak with anyone in the, in the show if they want to ask me how, how right. do I manage that. Right. So uh, talk a little bit about Blue Startups and what the experience has been like. I spoke with uh, Chinoa yesterday. I asked her to um, refer to us one of their best young companies who like to be on uh, the art of thinking smart and she came back in half an hour and said Antonio is ready so what has been your experience uh, just across the street here yeah so it's, it's been amazing you know like all the workshops all the mentors um, th like you sharing every day you're practicing every day uh, like your company uh, getting your your pitch more accurate going to customers managing your team is so intense mm. but at the same point 
so valuable mm -hmm. that this was our best decision. So you're part of what they call the ninth cohort, which means there's a group of companies, a variable number, six, eight, or companies or so, and this is the ninth wave of those companies over the past few years. And I think we have here a slide that tells us about an upcoming event on July the 7th, where you can come and meet Antonio Trincao and, and his brothers and sisters <laughs> in the ninth cohort. And out of that, well, Guy Kawasaki, who is one of the gods of the Apple universe, uh, will be there as a speaker. Very excited to see him again, and he's an amazing, an amazing person who has uh, such a global vision. Um, so I want to encourage everybody to come, if you can, and see that event with, with Antonio and, uh, and Guy Kawasaki. And just understand a little bit more about Blue Startups, because they're always bringing in new people, right? They're always like six months or less away from bringing, starting a new cohort. And they're always looking for great new ideas. Um, so let's say we're 10 years in the future and you can event has accomplished everything that you want to accomplish. What will that final vision look like for you? Doing an event on Mars. Oh, okay. I w we will be the first brand of yeah. doing an event. It's too bad David Bowie is gone. Can we, can we take him? <laughs> yeah, no, but but basically, uh, we have to to win all the industry sectors of, of our industry. So, sports inter entertainment, uh, events, corporate events, wedding, bartending, nightlife industry, everything. Wow. So, uh, we. So, are you gonna do like you gonna do an Olympics or something like that? Is all your Oscars, Victoria's Secret show, oh, Super okay. Bowl. That's our vision. Like to be right. like of, we will be the platform for doing all right. the events in the world. But in terms of branding and awareness and creating beautiful experiences, we want to do those events. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm looking forward to going. <laughs> you will great. see. We have uh, Antonio's name and uh, contact email here if you're interested in being in touch with him more. And go to youcanevent.com to see the whole program in action. Exactly. So I want to thank everyone very much for uh, tuning into this Art of Thinking Smart. And until next time, from ThinkTech Hawaii in Honolulu, aloha.